As you take your GED mathematics test, most questions will require you to select your answer from one of five choices. Then you'll carefully fill in the corresponding circle in your answer booklet completely using a number two pencil. Some questions will ask you to mark your answer in a grid, either a coordinate grid or the standard grid. Each requires you to find the answer to the problem and enter the answer directly onto the grid. Let's begin with the standard grid to see how you would solve a typical problem and enter the answer onto the grid. The standard grid has five columns. Each column has one or more math symbols and the numerals 0 through 9 in circles. This grid can be used to display any positive numerical answer requiring up to five positions, including whole numbers, decimals, and fractions. However, since there's no negative sign, your answer can never be a negative number. For example, the following problem involves the use of decimals. To test the effect of a fertilizer, pea plants are measured each week. One plant measured 31.7 centimeters last week and 47.8 centimeters this week. In centimeters, how much did it grow during the week? If we subtract 31.7 centimeters from 47.8 centimeters, the result is 16.1 centimeters. The plant grew 16.1 centimeters during the week. So we need to enter 16.1 into the proper standard grid for that problem on the answer sheet. The first line of boxes across the top of the standard grid is always blank. The boxes are there for you to enter your answer one numeral or symbol per space. However, since the scoring computer cannot read the written numerals and symbols, you must convert them to an answer the computer can read. To do this, fill in the proper circle in the column below each numeral or symbol. In the box at the top of the first column, you wrote the numeral 1, so go to the circle underneath it that contains the number 1 and fill it in. Be sure to stay in the same column. The second box contains a 6. Fill in the circle containing the 6 in that vertical column. The third box contains the decimal point. Fill in the decimal point circle under your written symbol. The final numeral of your answer is a 1. So find the 1 circle in that column and fill it in. When you are finished, your answer will look like this. Your solution to the problem is written across the top of the standard grid, one numeral or symbol to a box. Below each numeral or symbol, one circle will be completely filled in. Notice that the last box on the right is empty. For this problem, that column can be left blank. Be sure that you have filled in the correct circle for the number or symbol you've written at the top of the column. Remember as well, you will not be graded on the answer written across the top of the grid, only on the circles which you have filled in. In the problem we've just solved, we only needed four of the five columns provided. We filled in the first four columns, but we could have used the last four columns instead. That's because the scoring computer looks only for a correct pattern of darkened circles. Standard grids can also be used for answers involving fractions. For example, let's take the question, Mrs. Stone bought seven raffle tickets at a bazaar. If there were 200 raffle tickets sold altogether and only one prize to be given, what's the probability that Mrs. Stone would win? The answer is 7 out of 200, or 7 two hundredths. Using one numeral or symbol per box, we write the answer across the top of the standard grid. Then we begin filling the circles with the matching numerals and symbols. First, we fill in the 7 circle, directly under our written numeral 7. Then the fraction line symbol, under the fraction line we drew to separate the fraction's numerator from its denominator. Finally, being careful to keep filling in only one circle per column, we fill in the circles under the numerals we wrote for the denominator. Once completed, our answer should look like this. The fraction is written out across the top of the standard grid, and one circle is filled in below each numeral or symbol. As we mentioned earlier, 
A standard grid can be used to display the answer to a problem as a fraction or a decimal. For example, if the answer to a problem is a fraction, such as one quarter, you can also enter it into the grid as its decimal equivalent of 0.25. Either answer will be scored as correct. If the answer to a question is a mixed number, such as three and one-half, you must convert it to its fraction or decimal equivalent before entering it on a standard grid. When the answer to a question is a point on the coordinate plane, that answer is recorded on the coordinate grid. The grid represents some of the points on the central section of the coordinate plane. Each point has an X and a Y value. For example, if the answer for a question was 3, negative 4, this point would be filled in. On the other hand, if the answer for a question was negative 5, 0, this point would be filled in. All points are described by two whole numbers, so answers will never require a fraction or a decimal. Also remember, as you're taking the test, do not mark answers to these questions in the test booklet. You must mark your answer only on the appropriate coordinate grid on your answer sheet. Let's take a look at a sample question to see how its answer is marked on a coordinate grid. Three vertices of a rectangle are shown in this graph. What is the location of the fourth vertex of the rectangle? Knowing certain properties of a rectangle, and seeing three of its vertices, you should be able to determine the location of the fourth vertex. The correct answer for this question is the point negative two, negative four. That point, and only that point, should be marked on the coordinate grid. And take note, a grid marked with more than one point will be scored as incorrect. You've now seen how to mark an answer using the standard and coordinate grids. When using the standard grid, remember to use the empty boxes at the top to record your answer, one numeral or symbol per box. You must then fill in the circles that represent those numerals or symbols using no more than one circle in each column. Answers for these questions can be whole numbers, fractions, or decimals, but not mixed numbers or negative numbers. When using a coordinate grid, remember that you must have an X value and a Y value to plot a point. No answer for these questions can have a coordinate that is a fraction or a decimal. And mark only the one circle that represents your answer. Good luck and good results on your test.